Hello, I'm Jay Wittuster, service tech at Bodine Manufacturing. And in this segment, we're going to go over the startup procedure on this hot dog here. So some of the tools that you're going to need to perform this startup are you need an amp clamp. Okay, this amp clamp is going to check the amp draws on the motor. That's what we're concerned with. We want to make sure it's running within specs. We're also going to need a good voltmeter. Okay, we're going to want to check voltage to the meter on the line voltage side and we're going, to, we're going to want to check on the low voltage side as well. The third device that we're going to need to use, uh, we're going to need a manometer. We're going to want to check the gas pressure to this unit. You can use a digital, uh, you can use a slack tube, U-tube manometer as well. You're going to want a, an assortment of nut drivers to get into the panel. You're also going to want some Allen wrenches. You're also going to need some screwdrivers. All right, now that we have our tools, we're ready to do the startup on this unit. So the first thing that we need to do in order to get ready for the startup is we need to make sure that our power is off, okay? There's a connection switch here, the power's off. We need to make sure that our gas is in the off position. And for purposes of this demo, our thermostat is also in the off position. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to open up the access door, the control door, and okay, there's two 516 screws. You want to remove this door. And once we have the door removed, you want to inspect the wires. Well, you should have done this when you probably hooked up the electrical wires. It's always a good idea at this point that we're going to want to check and inspect the wires. So you're going to want to go through and make sure that our connections are all tight. Okay, we want to check out all the wires. Make sure our gas valve connections are tight. All the connections on the board. What we're looking for is any wire that's loose that could cause a problem uh, while operating. You can inspect the limit switch wires. We also want to make sure our pressure switch tubing is connected properly to the pressure switch, which is located here, and to the power exhauster itself. After that, after we've inspected everything, the next step that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to fire the unit off. The first thing that we're going to, we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check the gas pressure. So what we're going to take is we're going to take our Allen wrench and our gas valve. We have an inlet port and we have an outlet port. So you're going to want to inspect your inlet gas pressure. Before I go on, I want to explain the gas pressure settings for these units. When we make these units, we don't set the gas pressure at the factory. There's a lot of people that think we do set that, and we don't. Uh, it's all dependent on the contractor when they're in the field. Uh, so what we want to want to do is when we get the unit, we want to check our inlet gas pressure, which is right here. There's a tap for it. And what we're looking for is on natural gas, you want anywhere between six to seven inches of water column inlet pressure. On propane, Again, we're going to check it at the same tab. You're going to want 11 to 14 inches inlet pressure. You've got to make sure you're within that range for this unit to operate properly. Once we verify that, we're going to want to move over to the manifold pressure side. And what this is doing is this is monitoring the gas pressure to the burners to make sure this unit operates properly. Natural gas, this valve has to be set at 3.5 inches of water column. On propane, it has to operate at 10 inches of water column. So that's important to understand right away. It's important that we get this set up properly on the inlet side, and now we're on to the manifold side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Allen wrench, and we're going to back this fitting out. So we can hook up our manometer to unit itself. So we have that removed. Take our manometer. We're going to put that in place of where that screw was. Just take a minute here. Now after this, after we get this set up, we're going to want to turn on the gas. We're going, to, we're going to want to turn on the electrical. We're 
we're going to want to be ready for the thermostat to have a call for heat. Okay, so now that we have this set up, I'm going to turn my gas on. I'm going to turn my power on. I'm going to want to make sure that my gas valve is in the on position. There's just a lever switch off and on. You're going to want to make sure it's in the on position. Now that we're ready to go, turn your thermostat up. Power exhaustor starts. This is over here. This will take a few seconds to get going. What it's doing right now is it's purging out any of the gases that may be in the flue vent. Our igniter has started. As you can see, the burners are running. You want to make sure and inspect both burners. Make sure they both fire. And at this point, now I'm going to check my gas pressure. Right now, I'm low. I know I'm currently almost half of what I should be. So at this point, you're going to need to use a flathead screwdriver. And we're going to want to access the adjustment screw on the gas valve. What this requires is you take the gas or the screw off here. It's just a flathead screw. This screw will come out. And then underneath there, there's another flat-headed opening that you want to turn. So we're going to adjust this. We're going to start turning it until we get the proper gas pressure that we're looking for. And again, we're looking for 10 inches of water column on a propane unit. That's what we're working on today. After you get the gas pressure adjusted, you're going to want to make sure we put this back in. Very critical that you put that back in. Screw that down. After you get it tight, the next step would be to shut the gas valve off while it's running. The reason for this is we want to kill the burner so that we're not applying any more heat to the unit, but we need the back fan to cool the heat exchanger out before we move on. So what I usually do is I wait for the fan to time out. It's got a time off position. It's preset, so you don't have to worry about changing the length of the time off position. It will just run itself until it finally cools down and it'll shut off. After the fan shuts off, we're obviously going to want to make sure this is another very key point to this unit. We want to kill the power. We want to make sure that you put this plug back in the valve. Very critical that you make sure that you do that. You don't want to have this off and then try to refire the unit. So we're going to put this back in. And we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, now that we've replaced the tap of the gas valve, we've put the screw back in. Now we're on to the next part of this, which is verifying the amp draw on the motor. We're going to want to make sure that this motor is operating within specs. In order to find out what this unit itself, what the amp draw of the motor is, there's a tag on the, on the motor itself. It'll give you what that motor should operate on. On this Modine, Hot dog 30,000 BTU, this motor is rated for 2.4 amps. So we're just going to want to verify that it's operating properly, that it has the, the proper uh, voltage to it and so forth. And we're going to do that by using an amp probe. So the next step is to obviously turn the power back on, turn our thermostat up. Now what we're waiting for, we've got our power exhaustor starting. The next would be the gas valve itself open. And then soon after that, the main lower motor will come out. What we got to do to verify the amp draw of the motor is you want to put your probe on the motor lead. We're going to want to wait for that motor to start. And so we can verify the actual amps that that motor is pumping. Once it gets started here, the timeout factor, it times itself out, so it's going to take a 
about 30 seconds to 45 seconds to get going. And once it does, we'll be able to check the actual amps on this unit. So the motor has started. So now we're verifying the amp draw. Let the motor get going. And that's definitely within specs. At this point, what you're going to want to do again, turn the gas valve off. You're going to want to make sure that the unit itself cools itself down. You don't want to turn the unit completely out because the heat exchanger can still be warm. And we don't want to do that. We want to get all the heat off the heat exchanger before it shuts down. Okay, now we verify the gas pressure, verify the amp on the motor. The next step would be is to check our voltages. What we want to do is we want to make sure this unit is operating at the proper voltage. So obviously we need a voltmeter, and what we're going to want to verify is the actual voltage coming to the unit. We're going to want to check our 24 volts as well. So you're going to want to find your incoming power, okay? You're going to want to check at the control board. And what we're looking for is 120 volts. Okay, we want to make sure that we have the proper voltage coming in. And we also want to make sure our thermostat connections, we want to make sure we're having a full 24 volts there. And those are the operating uh, parameters that we need on this unit in order to operate it properly. All right. Now that we've checked the gas pressure, we've verified the amp draws on the motor, we've checked our electrical incoming powers, we're ready for this unit to operate. At this point, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we shut the unit off. Then we want to make sure that our power is off. Let's turn our gas connection off and our thermostat down. And again, I want to go over one more visual before we close this unit up. So again, you're going to want to check your wiring, make sure that nothing came loose. Make sure everything is proper. Make sure your gas valve is in the on position. We're going to also want to make sure that our fan blade is spinning properly. I'm going to go over there and just check it. You can spin it by hand. Make sure your louvers are in the open position so that we can get the heat to the space. And after that, we're ready to apply the door back out to the unit and close it up. For full detail on this startup, if you go to your installation manual that is provided with every unit, you go to page 17 of the hot dog manual, it gives you an installation and operation instruction. It'll walk you step by step through what you need to do before you turn this over to the building owner. If you don't have this for some reason, make sure you check out our website at www.modinehvac.com.